I know this might rustle some of you, but I just need to get this off of my chest. Antifa is becoming a huge problem in the United States today. They claim to be anti-fascist as if fascism is currently any potential threat to the USA, and yet all they seem to be capable of doing is getting in the way of white supremacists and right-wing terrorists' ability to kill even more people than they already have. Antifa is a massive problem for those who seek to marginalize, harass, disenfranchise, and terrorize minority groups in the land of the free, the United States of America. According to a report by the Anti-Defamation League, quote, in 2018, domestic extremists killed at least 50 people in the US. The extremist-related murders in 2018 were overwhelmingly linked to right-wing extremists. Every one of the perpetrators had ties to at least one right-wing extremist movement. White supremacists were responsible for the great majority of the killings, which is typically the case. The perpetrators of these heinous crimes include the Tallahassee Yoga Studio shooting, which killed two and wounded five, whose perpetrator expressed hostility towards women who engaged in interracial relationships, and who had posted videos to social media containing racist and misogynistic commentary. The Pittsburgh Synagogue shooting, which killed 11 and injured seven, whose anti-Semitic white supremacist perpetrator had, quote, blamed Jews for orchestrating the immigration of non-whites into the United States. The Stoneman Douglas High School shooting, which killed 17 and wounded 17 more, whose perpetrator had, quote, belonged to a racist Instagram group and hated blacks and Jews, even claiming Jews wanted to destroy the world, and, quote, had etched swastikas onto ammunition magazines left behind at the school after the shooting. And the list goes on in 2018 alone. But I think after bringing up all these reprehensible right-wing monsters up, I should at least go over some of the lives Antifa has ruined, at least I would if there were any. The same report goes on to say that, quote, right-wing extremists are responsible for the vast majority of extremist-related murders over the last decade. Of 427 total deaths, just 3.2% were linked to left-wing extremism. Contrast that against the 73.3% linked to right-wing extremism, and this paints a pretty good picture of which group is actually a danger to the people of the United States. Going back just a year to August 12, 2017, a crowd of people had been peacefully protesting the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, when a car deliberately drove into them, killing one and injuring 28. The driver of the car had espoused neo-Nazi and white supremacist beliefs, was convicted in state court of hit and run and the first degree murder of Heather Heyer and had pled guilty to 29 of 30 federal hate crime charges. Two years later, on August 14th, 2019, a group of protesters from the Jewish Never Again Action Movement were peacefully protesting outside the Wyatt Detention Center in Central Falls, Rhode Island. Among the group were children, elderly, and even wheelchair-bound demonstrators with several people blocking access to the facility in protest of the horrific conditions migrants and asylum seekers endure in this camp and many others like it. For more on the horrendous conditions of these camps, check out this video from episode 1 of the Kanye Report. From the video, it looks like 13 people on one side and 12 on the other were were sitting down across the entrance and exit of this facility when Captain Thomas Woodworth, a corrections officer who worked at the camp, drove his truck into the peaceful Jewish protesters, hospitalizing two of them. The following is the video from that incident, courtesy of the Never Again Action Twitter account. Content warning if you uh, don't like to see concentration camp guards almost run over Jewish protesters and assault them with their vehicle. As you can see, after quickly approaching the crowd of sitting protesters from the safety of his truck, Captain Thomas Woodworth came to a stop. However, after realizing that his initial threat of violence wasn't enough to scare him away, Woodworth tactically ascertained that he could proceed to his destination simply by running the Jewish protesters over. Luckily, other guards were on the scene, became aware of the fact that Woodworth drove his truck into the crowd, and carried out the usual, measured response of pepper spraying the crowd of peaceful protesters, sending three more of them to the hospital. I don't know about you guys, but it seems to me that if any of the aforementioned neo-Nazi white supremacist right-wing terrorists had seen this incident, noted that the ice guard was only put on leave while the Jewish protesters were sent to the hospital after being pepper sprayed by other guards in response to becoming victims of vehicular assault, they might become even more emboldened to commit the insidious acts that they've been known for committing for a very long time. Especially when you have brain-dead morons like Lou Dobbs on national television blaming the victims of this assault for getting in the way. ICE protesters in Rhode Island harassing a federal detention center worker last night. Uh, these demonstrators blocking the entrance to a facility holding illegal immigrants uh, when the driver tried to pull in uh, to the parking lot. The protesters surrounded him, yelling, banging on the hood of the truck, blocking his entrance into the facility. I am so glad that we have esteemed intellectuals like Lou fucking Dobbs sticking their necks out for the most oppressed marginalized group in the US. Concentration camp guards. When will the people tasked with dehumanizing and abusing asylum seekers finally get their day in the sun? It boggles my mind how anyone could possibly want to protest a federal institution that allows for the death of migrant children in their custody because they can't be bothered to properly care for them. His framing of this incident is ridiculous. ICE protesters harassing a federal detention center worker. The poor guy was just trying to do his job. He had to drive into the crowd. He had no other choice. They were harassing him. They forced his hand. Sitting in his truck 
sidewalk, he was fearful for his life as soon as he saw the peaceful Jewish protesters sat on the fucking ground. When the driver tried to pull into the parking lot, the protesters surrounded him, yelling, banging on the hood of the truck. The primary reason why the protesters surrounded his vehicle is because he drove it into them. Typically, when you run your truck into a group of people, they're going to be displaced and begin to surround it on the left, on the right, and underneath it. This geriatric concentration camp apologist seems to think that victims of vehicular assault should just lie down and take it, rather than reacting the way any normal human being would, yelling and banging on the vehicle that, from their point of view, may have had the intention of severely injuring or killing them. Uh, in jurisdictions all around the country, by the way, what they committed is assault. Trying to stop uh, and block a vehicle is considered assault. In some instances, banging on an occupied vehicle is considered assault, uh, which obviously the demonstrators uh, may have committed uh, in Rhode Island last night. In jurisdictions all over the country, by the way, what Captain Thomas Woodworth committed is vehicular assault. But let's not pay any attention to the guy who drove his truck into the protesters. No, the protesters are at fault because they would not yield to the violence brought upon them by an agent complicit in the atrocities that they've been protesting. Joining us tonight, Tom Holman, former acting director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, also Fox Business contributor. Tom, great to see you. Uh, and I know that it must just gladden your heart to see uh, a bunch of uh, demonstrators at a uh, immigration customs enforcement facility blocking the path of a guard and then uh, complaining about the fact that he sought to do what is uh, within his rights, which is to proceed to park his vehicle and go to work. He sought to do what was in his rights, to drive his truck into a crowd of peaceful Jews exercising their First Amendment rights? Let me remind you that Dobbs and others are the same people who want to get in the way of women and their doctors when it comes to their reproductive choices because they value life and that's totally fine. But when people protest the death of migrants in federal custody and they get in the way of an ICE agent in his fucking parking space, that agent is somehow justified and within his rights to run them over and completely disregard the value of their lives. I don't want you guys to get it twisted. This is a method of intimidation. Lou Dobbs on national television is saying it's perfectly fine and within your rights to run over protesters if you happen to disagree with what they're saying. This is an incitement of violence, a threat to anyone out there who might want to publicly voice their concerns over the way migrants and asylum seekers are being abused and dehumanized in ICE detention facilities. This is an attack on free speech. To bolster this point, let me just say how interesting it is that after an ICE agent runs over peaceful protesters, instead of bringing on a spokesperson for Never Again Action or witnesses to the incident, Fox News decided to bring on a former ICE director to play the victim and completely hand wave the actions of one of his comrades. Not only is Captain Thomas Woodworth only put on admission administrative leave for threatening the lives of civilians, his sins are being completely absolved by Lou Dobbs and Fox News because they don't agree with the people he ran over. And people wonder how right-wing terrorists become so emboldened that they commit mass murders in the name of their ideology. Well, exactly. Look, first of all, a lot of protesters nationwide are showing up for ICE facilities, and it makes you wonder if they even got a job. <laughs> this man is drunk as hell. Holy shit. Truly a caricature of the absolute geniuses in top positions at immigration and customs enforcement. There really isn't much of a point to listening to the rest of this man's slurred diatribe on how concentration camp guards are somehow the real victims, but I played the beginning of his response, one, to clown on this fucking loser, and two, because he lets on something really interesting at the end of that sentence. It's a common argument used by fascists, capitalists, right-wingers to try to delegitimize protest movements that hurt their feelings, and oftentimes their wallets. He says, a lot of protesters nationwide have shown up at ICE facilities, and it makes you wonder if they even got a job. You know, because who has time to protest injustices if you have to work 40 plus hours just to keep the lights on and put food on the table? Almost like that's kind of an intentional side effect of the current economic system we live under. Really makes you think. Anyway, Never Again Action is a group of Jewish activists who have been calling out the brutalization of asylum seekers in the Trump concentration camps. On their website, NeverAgainAction.com, they state that they are a mass mobilization of Jews who are organizing to shut down ICE and hold the political establishment accountable for enabling both the deportation machine that has separated immigrant families across the U.S. for decades and the current crisis at the border. According to this tweet from a day after the incident, quote, We formed six weeks ago. Since then, we've done 36 actions across the country, shutting down ICE detention centers and field offices, including ICE headquarters in D.C. We're just getting started. They are an organization doing fantastic work, quite literally putting their bodies on the line to end the crisis at the border and help out our Latin American brothers and sisters. I urge you all to go to their website, neveragainaction.com, and follow their Twitter, at neveragainactn, and consider supporting them in any way that you can. Let it be known that the crisis at the border is largely the fault of U.S. intervention in Latin America. For decades, the U.S. has been pushing for and supporting the overthrow of democratically elected and oftentimes very popular governments in favor of those friendly to U.S. economic or military interests. What follows these coups is usually the destabilization of 
of these countries, leading to insecure conditions that help foster violence within them, which in turn forces families to leave in search of a safer place for them and their kids to live. Unfortunately for them, at this particular moment in time, the closest place to go is the United States, where they are then rounded up into cages at more than double or triple capacity, and are abused and mistreated until they are eventually violently ejected from the country, back into the conditions that they originally fled. For more on this, check out my deep dive into the 2009 US-backed military coup d'etat in my father's home country, Honduras, from episode 1 of the Kanye Report. In addition to US intervention, there is another big factor that will only exacerbate the migration crisis in North America and around the world. A crisis that is currently being ignored by the President of the United States, by most of the Republican Party and right-wing in general, and is actually being hurried along by many things, including the devastation of the lungs of the earth, the Amazon rainforest. This is all happening by direction of the fascist Bolsonaro administration that took power after President Lula da Silva, a massively popular president whose administration lifted tens of millions out of poverty, was illegitimately jailed in a soft coup that many in the U.S. supported. Stay tuned because in the next segment I'll be going over Bolsonaro's Amazon crisis, how this fascist ended up in the position of power he's in today, and how he's an existential threat to life on planet Earth. Following that, I'll be shitting on Tucker Carlson and talking about why celebrity elites laundering the image of a war criminal president is probably not the best idea, even if orange man bad. Why not just do it slightly slower? Because that's not my style, man. That's not, it's not, it's not what I do, dude. Do you think I go, do you think I have time to go slow? If my dad immigrated to this country in the present day, it's likely he would have ended up in one of these. Do you think I have time to speak slower for you guys? Come on. Thanks so much for watching this segment from episode 1 of the Kanye Report. This episode's Kanye Kahlo is Matthew Taub 2. Appreciate the support, hope you enjoy your tier 1 sub to my Twitch channel. If you'd like to be the next episode's Kanye Kahlo, follow me on Twitter at KanyeCC and retweet my video links when they go live. Don't forget to like this video, to the right of me is the link to subscribe to the channel, and next to that is even more content for you to enjoy. Love y'all very much. Fuck it. That's the 